Amber and I have just finished exhibiting at Manchester Art Fair. It was a fantastic weekend and we made loads of sales and met some really amazing people. One of the best things about exhibitions and art fairs is that you get to talk to people and you get to see their reactions to your work. A lot of people that come to these things are artists themselves and they always ask loads of questions about our work. One of the most common questions we get asked is how did you become an artist? And I thought I'd put together a little video sharing my top five tips for getting started as an artist. The charcoal piece that I'm going to be working on with this video was a commission. I was kindly allowed to film the process to show you guys. I also have a longer video discussing my charcoal techniques on my Studio Wildlife Patreon page. Before we get started on those five tips, I'm going to assume that you're already doing something creative, whether that's landscapes, portraits, wildlife art like I do, abstract art, even sculpture. You're doing something creative and making a product reasonably effectively. You're not starting from absolute nothing. So tip number one is make space. And getting yourself a space to create is massively important. I can't tell you how much of a difference it made with my art after my studio was built and I could start creating in that separate space. Having that designated space to create your work is absolutely critical for starting as an artist. When you're just getting going, you don't need to have a separate studio like I have. It could be a spare room or even your bedroom. But if you can separate a section of that room and have that separate space that's just for your art, you will notice massive improvements. It keeps you organized. It allows you to focus solely on creating. That is, as long as you keep it organised, keep it clean, and treat it with respect. Being an artist is a job. You need a workspace that is solely for that work, and you and your family need to treat it and respect it like a workspace. Tip number two, you need to create a body of work. What I mean by that is you need to have a good portfolio with lots of examples of your work, so that potential buyers have a good idea of what you can do. Try to be consistent with a theme and general subject choice. If you want to be a pet portrait artist, then don't put landscapes or abstracts in your portfolio. Keep it consistent. Keep it as pet portraits. Don't focus on trying to make any money at this stage. Just focus on building up a really decent body of work. And I'm talking 100 plus pieces. Sticking with that pet portrait theme, start local. Draw your family or friends pets. Give them as gifts or accept small commissions from them. Ask them to spread the word and expand within your local area. Practice as much as possible so that one, you're developing your skill. And two, you're building up that large catalogue of work for when you actually launch. You don't want to launch into a global market before you're ready. Your work needs to be of a competent level to compete with the other artists that are out there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it still has to be good. So the more that you can practice and the more that you can improve before expanding online, the better your work will be received and hopefully the faster your business will grow. Tip number three is about identifying your potential buyers. So you've spent the last year or so honing your craft. You've created a hundred or more pieces that you're proud of. They're a consistent quality and a consistent theme. Now you have to identify your target audience. Who are the buyers of your work going to be? There's two parts to this. Who's engaged by your work? And who is going to be willing to actually spend money on it? Keeping with that pet portrait theme, there's a huge range of potential buyers out there. Here in the UK, nearly 60% of households own pets. There's about 34 million pets in the UK, and that sort of covers about 17 million houses. 
I mean, I've got a Springer Spaniel called Charlie, and I cannot remember my life without her. We have loads of portraits of her around the house, and I'm sure that out of those 17 million households, there's a huge number of people who feel exactly the same way and would love portraits of their pets. You could be a landscape artist, a sculptor, you could be an abstract artist, and the principle still applies. Sit down and think about who is going to buy your art. What kind of age range are they? What demographics do they fall under? What job might they have? What books or magazines might they read? Create a plan of action for who you are going to market your work to. Like I said in my last video, figure out what it is that makes you unique. Is your style different? Is the medium you use different? Do you use unusual colour ranges that no one else is using? What is it that marks you as unique? What makes you memorable? And who is going to appreciate that? Tip number four, how to find your audience and actually show them your work. So you've created your action plan. You've got a high quality portfolio. You've created hundreds of pieces for friends, family, and people in your local area. And now you're ready to expand. You know who you need to aim your work at, but how do you actually reach them? This is one of the hardest challenges for even the most established artists. And honestly, if there was a hard and fast rule for this, then every artist would be a millionaire. Unfortunately, reaching buyers is really difficult. The simplest, and in my opinion, one of the most efficient ways to reach your audience is through social media. Sure, you could use things like eBay, Etsy, Redbubble, Society6. I mean, there's countless sites like those where you can showcase and sell your work, but starting simple with Facebook, Instagram, and, and now TikTok is definitely the best way to get started with your art career, in my opinion. You can always expand into those other sites once your career starts to develop. If you've never used social media before, get help from friends and family. Ask them to help you set up your accounts and show you how to post your work. Keep it simple, post good quality images of your work, and give some information about that work that you're creating. Not just the basic details like size and medium, but things like who you are, how you made it, why you made it, what inspired you to make it? People like to know the story behind the work they buy. So sharing that story through social media is a great way to engage potential buyers. And most importantly, don't fall into the trap of creating things to reach more people. Create what you love and you're going to then start to grow a loyal following. I would much rather have 1000 followers who love and buy my art than 100,000 followers who only have a superficial interest in my work. Getting that loyal following of repeat clients and friends that you can develop relationships with is one of the biggest points and one of the most important things that you need to do to establish your art career. Sticking with the social media theme, this brings us nicely onto tip number five which is about presenting your work. The photos you post of your art need to be professional, high quality, and be actually representative of that physical artwork. That means no blurry photos, no background clutter, and no strange distorted side angle shots that do absolutely nothing for the art. You could be the most amazing artist in the world, but if you post rubbish quality photos of your work, then no one is going to be able to appreciate the quality of the art. I actually have a video explaining how I take photos of my work, which I'll share at the end of this video. The better quality photo and the better presented that photo is, the more appealing it will be to your audience. Take those well presented photos and put them on social media. Tell your story about the piece and what it is that makes it special. Then if your aim is to sell your work, you need to make that as easy as possible for the potential buyers. Put a price on it and tell your audience how they can get in touch or exactly how they can buy the piece. The fewer obstacles in the way of that person buying your artwork, the better it's going to be for you. I'm not going to lie to you, becoming a professional artist is hard. It's stressful 
And in the beginning, making an income is really difficult. But be persistent and set small, manageable goals for yourself. Start with one sale, then five, then ten. Don't jump straight in with a goal of a hundred sales. You'll just disappoint yourself and you'll you'll lose interest and you'll lose motivation. In fact, sales should really be the last thing on your mind when you're just starting out. You should be focusing primarily on improving, getting better, creating work that is unique, that only you can make, so that you're going to then build a loyal following that are going to appreciate your art because of those unique things. Strive to find something that you do better than anybody else and harness it. In my opinion, in order to do that, you're going to need to give yourself space to create. You're going to need to build a body of work that shows off what you can do. You need to determine who your target audience is and then find that target audience by starting social media accounts and then present your work in a professional way. And if you'd like to see how I take photos of my work for Instagram and for my website, then check out this video here. If you've enjoyed the video and found these tips useful, please give it a like and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.